Okay, here we go. Norse slash Viking capsule wardrobe. And this one turned into an absolutely crazy wild ride of an adventure. Uh, basically, I did the entire thing and then my channel started to gain traction finally. And I was like, crap, this needs to actually be a good one. So then I basically redid the whole thing. And then I made shoes. So here we go. Before we get started, a couple of questions that I got in the other capsule wardrobe videos so many times that I kind of quit bothering to answer them. One is concerning what program slash template I use to digitize and do graphic illustration. I just use Adobe Illustrator. And then the other question was concerning men's costuming slash men's capsule wardrobe. And the thing is, I literally don't care about men's fashion history, like at all. <laughs> So I know almost nothing about it. But then the other issue I have with it is that I designed the capsule wardrobes to my aesthetic, like what I would consider acceptable to wear in public. It's hard because I don't know what a guy would think is socially acceptable to wear in public as modern clothing. So again, it's not a hard no, it's just a, I don't know exactly how to approach this one. So I'm at least going to get several more women's capsule wardrobes done before I go anywhere near touching that. So anyways, on to the Viking slash Nordic capsule wardrobe. So I realized what I didn't like about my original capsule wardrobe is that I basically just shortened the skirts a little. I had put almost no actual modernization thought into the designs. So what I did is I went back and I looked for what are the elements that make Viking iconic? What do you picture when you see Viking clothing? And what you see are the layers, you see the texture, you see the color, you see the embroidery. So what I decided to do was give it a completely brand new silhouette with a fitted modern bodice and a flared skirt. I also decided to do a wool textured overlay over all of the pieces for this capsule wardrobe. And I think that it made a big difference in the end result. I made a very simple longer skirt layer, which I don't think that any kind of skirt was particularly accurate for the Viking time period, but a long skirt to kind of peep out underneath the shorter skirt layers could be very easily varied up and used in a lot of different circumstances. Then I digitized a pair of pants, and this was my second attempt at pants. The first attempt was in the original wardrobe. It was a little bit more literal of an interpretation of the men's pants from this time period. What I decided to do was make the pants a little bit more modern shaped with a regular pockets and fly at the top and give them just a little bit of wideness that can be gathered below the knee. Oh, oh, you can see my original baggy pants. Ew, gross. <laughs> Okay, for the next piece, I wanted to make an apron dress, but I don't think that the actual historical apron dresses are very easily transferred into modern clothing because they're just kind of a flap hanging down. They don't qualify as a shirt or a dress of any kind. But if you lace up the side of the bodice, then you can wear it as a shirt. And I like the side lacing because one, it's functional, two, it looks cool. Actually, that's it. Functional and it looks cool. Some of the apron dresses you see are completely solid dresses. They just have a straight across neckline and then two wide straps, usually held up with the brooches. So I wanted to make one of those because it can function as a standalone dress or as a layering piece. The next piece I made was a jacket. I really love these kind of jackets because they're so functional, but they're basically just the exact same cut as the rest of the dresses, but with a front opening. So I wanted to make one jacket like that, but make it fairly short so that it fits more in the line of modern jackets and cardigans and blazers and less of a like dress. And then to fancy it up, okay, we have to do one magnificent fur collar. There's gotta be one.
So then for the belt, I pretty much straight up traced this one. There are other belts that I could have gone with, but I think that this type of tablet woven tie belt is the most commonly seen in this Viking Nordic style. I mean, there are lots and lots of cool leather belts, but let's stay away from fantasy territory. And then I got to actually start adding the embroidery, which is the thing that's going to make it Nordic. dress that I already embroidered. I forgot to do the piece that I really wanted to do and those are those apron dresses that have a pleated section across the front. So what I did is I went back and I took away the central embroidery patch and I'm going to save that design for another piece and I added some rows of pleats instead of the two center darts and that one is now also done. And then I haven't made a necklace yet. You have to have one of those with the two brooches and then the strands of beads in between. The thing is like it works fine with the pieces. It's okay but I feel like for modern wear it's a little bit too out there. I mean you can do what you want but I don't think I would wear that. I think what I I would probably do is that I would separate the brooches and I would wear smaller brooches and then instead of wearing the beads in between them I would probably just wear that as a necklace. And then I decided that this capsule needed some more tops and blouses to go with it and I decided to make one based off of that dress that was worn with the belt I traced and just basically make that dress as a blouse. So it's gathered at the neckline, it gathers at the waist with the belt or it could be tucked into something. It has kind of full poofy sleeves and then the neckline and the sleeves all be gather into a contrast band and then I did a similar contrast band at the bottom edge. And then for trim I traced this cool little deer antler weaving pattern and then I used that trim along the edges of the sleeves and the hem, and that piece is done. And then I made two more, which I didn't actually film any of the digitizing process, but I mean, you've, you've seen plenty of that already. I wanted to do one more based off of men's tunics, so I made a green long sleeve shirt with just a little bit of a longer tunic length hem. It's got a split in the neckline with some embroidered wolves, and then a bit more embroidery around the sleeve cuffs. 
And then for the last piece, I needed another top, but I was sad that I hadn't gotten to use the embroidery from this jacket from Arm Street. So all I did was basically just design that jacket as a shirt with short sleeves that has frog closures up the front. Okay, so I am down to just digitizing the shoes. There is a very specific kind of shoe that I want to go with, and a precursory bit of research, they're not actually Viking shoes, and if you call them that, you will be lambasted. They're called Iron Age shoes, and there's something very specifically cool about these shoes, and that is they have a felt lining, so if you wear the lining, they're very warm winter boots, but if you take the lining out, then they're basically summer sandals. So that is just like A plus versatility points. I need shoe glue. I'll be right back. And now, all 12 pieces are done and it's time to review the capsule. The first thing made was the simple green dress. It pairs pretty well with the rest of the capsule, although I do really like it just by itself as a standalone piece, and I think it's one that you kind of have to limit yourself and only pair two or three things together. I like that it's a very, very subtle nod to the Nordic and early medieval styles with the contrast bands, but the fit and the cut of the dress are so modern you could wear that anywhere and not get noticed. Next up is the red dress. This one I also prefer just by itself, but it does pair well with the other things and it looks pretty cool as a layering piece, and it can be layered over or underneath the other pieces, which is kind of cool too. Then we have the green apron dress, and this one I think is the single coolest piece. 
I think it looks really cool by itself as just a tank top. And I also really like the deep V at the neckline because that's really good for showing other contrasting necklines, whether they are layered underneath it or above. I think just the green apron dress paired with the pants is one of my favorite looks from this capsule. Next up we have the pants, and I'm really happy with the way these pants turned out. I think they do look mostly modern, but it's just that extra little bit of detail, like that subtly adds to it. I think that it pairs really well with all of the tops. I don't really like the pants layered underneath the skirt or the dresses. I don't know why, but I just don't think that it looks good. And then the next piece is the skirt. I really love the embroidery, and maybe it would look a lot cooler in real life. I have a hard time telling whether I'm unhappy with the design itself or with my drawing of the design, with my representation. I'm just not as thrilled with this piece and I'm not sure why. I think it's just how long and straight it is, especially compared to the level of detail that are on all of the other pieces. But again, I think that that one would look a lot better in real life. Next up we have the green tunic top. I'm really happy with this one too. It's just, it looks very comfortable. <laughs> It's very detailed, but very simple at the same time. There's something about it I really like. And I do like it paired with most of the other pieces. And then we have the blousey top. This one I think is cool because it's very functional. It kind of fills the purpose of a blouse, but according to Nordic style, you wouldn't just have a white blouse. It would have some element of detail to it. So it's the lightest brown beige color that I was using, but it also has that contrast colors that match up with all of the other warm tones in the capsule. So I do really like that piece. And then we have the jacket. I don't actually have any issues with that. I think that one turned out pretty good. Especially the collar. Oh my gosh, that fur. I think that even the fur collar, even as extra as it is, I don't think that it would be too terrible in modern day with the jacket. I mean, if you just had it by itself, I think it would stand out a lot more. You do see jackets with big fur collars sometimes. And I think that depending on the pattern you used for the jacket, it could have a really cool vintage feel. And then we have the third top, the last piece. I made. And this one, I really do like it on its own merit, but I will admit that it was the hardest to pair with things. I don't know why exactly the fit or the colors, but it just didn't work quite as well with the other pairings. Not to mention I'm running out of unique pairings to put on these boards. <laughs> And then we have the brooches and beads, which I believe are called a burka. Even though it is a cool piece on its own, I still maintain that I would separate them and either use the brooches or the necklace, depending on which your particular outfit would most benefit from. I think my favorite thing about this capsule is that if you just start layering all of these pieces and piling them on top of each other, they become so aggressively Viking so fast. But on the other hand, if you take those exact same pieces and you either wear them by themselves or you pair them individually with normal clothing, I think that they blend in pretty subtle and you could get away with any of those pieces on an individual basis. They're very subtle nods on their own, but they would be so cool to have, like with just regular blue jeans or a regular blouse. This is definitely by far my favorite capsule yet. There are just so many cool options, I could hardly stop trying to pair them all together. And I got a pair of shoes out of the deal. You do not know how long I've been wanting to make shoes. I bought all the tools I needed at a swap meet at a tractor fair. And then I bought all the leather I needed at a French and Indian war reenactment. I just had it sitting in my closet for like a year. And then finally I was like, we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna go for it. And they turned out pretty darn good. They're a little rough around the edges, especially of the heel but I can still go back and sand that down, I think, and make them a little bit more level and even. And if I do that, I'll probably clear coat the sole. I mean, I have really good traction in them, which was my biggest concern. I feel like the leather I used for the body is just a little bit thinner. Maybe if it was just like a few millimeters thicker, it would be more sturdy. And I stitched up the back with just waxed linen thread, and I don't know how well that's gonna hold up, but because it's all exterior stitching, I can just go back and replace that at any time I need to. But yes, I am so happy with these shoes. I'm so excited. <laughs> I've been trying to make shoes since like fifth grade and every single time they sucked. <laughs> so this is like the first pair of shoes I've ever made that's like real shoes. They're like real shoes. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. But I had fun with this, and if you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I post kind of more current updates of the projects that I'm working on. I'm trying to get back to more sewing videos. I might take a slight break from capsule wardrobes because I have so much sewing footage that I really need to use up because I feel guilty about sewing any new projects while I have all of this other footage unused. So we shall see, but yes, good things in the future.